William Blake is our most revolutionary prophet and visionary. His work wholly transformed my own thinking and even my own being. But he has given us a full and total vision of an absolutely new Christianity, which is nonetheless a rebirth and renewal of an ultimate Christianity that historically had been lost. Now the modern obsession with or enactment of the death of God is an enactment of the condition in which we are that Blake's prophecy and vision so profoundly addresses and indeed transforms. But Blake is simultaneously one of our greatest, if not our greatest, prophet and visionary of the death of God, but that is inseparable from his recovery of and transformation of an original Christianity. Now, Blake himself had very little education, really no formal education at all. He was largely, if not wholly, self-taught and taught passionately by his own vision. But he's also, and this is something that is almost never referred to, but I have to mention it, he's one of the few visionaries who had a co-visionary, namely his wife, Catherine. And his wife, Catherine, was not only an inspiration to Blake, but she actually shared in his creativity. We, 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 there's a great deal of scholarly controversy about this. It's not something that can be precisely demonstrated, but nevertheless, it's very important. And one of the fascinating things is that even though Blake's vision is so revolutionary, Blake himself has become a kind of universal prophet who celebrated really throughout the world. Now, I think of myself as being perhaps the only Blakean theologian. Maybe that's not true, but I don't, I've never encountered another Blakean theologian. But certainly, it was Blake who inspired my own deeper theological work. And Blake who gave me decisive keys that just overwhelmed me in that work. Now, I would like to refer to Blake's greatest work, but it's also his most difficult work. This is his great poem, Prophecy, Jerusalem. Now, this is commonly accepted as one of our very greatest works, and it's also commonly judged to be, and quite properly so, one of our most difficult works, if not our most difficult work. But nevertheless, there are points in this great work which I think can communicate it to humanity at large. Now, one of the profound motifs of Jerusalem is, to ploy Blake's own language, the self-annihilation of God. Now, the self-annihilation of God is simultaneously the enactment of the ultimate death of God. But that very enactment and that death is apocalypse itself. Now, you should be aware that apocalypse is precisely what was lost in the genesis of Christianity and is the profound whole or abyss which is always accompanying Christianity and it wasn't really discovered until late modernity. But let's dwell a moment upon that. Everyone knows, or everyone knows who's looked at it, that in the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which are commonly judged to be the gospels which are closest to the original Jesus, 
that in these Gospels, the primary acts of Jesus revolve about the proclamation and enactment of the kingdom of God. And that, that's absolutely primary language in these Gospels. The problem is that Christianity, as it evolved, absolutely and totally transformed an original kingdom of God. Most scholars are agreed upon that, by the way. That's not even a controversial issue. And even people like uh, Heidegger, who are thinking in a different arena, perhaps, nevertheless, Heidegger's work very deeply involves about trying to recover something that's been absolutely lost for Heidegger, that's being itself, and the forgetfulness of being. But I'm speaking in the context of the New Testament and the Christian tradition. What's lost is the kingdom of God. Almost immediately, that is holy transformed in early Christianity and fundamentally is lost. Now, frankly, uh, this is something that's not even a controversial issue in critical scholarship. It's just that the most people have no awareness of this. But what this is saying is that everything that we know and apprehend and encounter that calls itself Christianity, is a Christianity that is wholly transformed its original ground. Wholly transformed. And truly lost an original kingdom of God. Lost that which Jesus proclaimed and enacted. Now here is where Blake is perhaps most important, at least in this arena, because Blake truly recovers an absolutely lost kingdom of God. And his work can in large measure be understood as an ever progressive reenactment and rebirth and renewal of an absolutely lost kingdom of God. So if you like, you know, we have all these talks about the quest for Jesus and how we've lost Jesus. Well, I think one of those who most profoundly and effectively recovered Jesus was William Blake. And this is absolutely central, absolutely primal in his whole imaginative life and enactment. Now, where this most profoundly occurs is in his most difficult work, Jerusalem. Now, I want to give you a little sample of Jerusalem. You've got to be aware that this is very, very difficult language. Very, very difficult language. But let me give you a sample of it. I'm reading from the 38th plate of Jerusalem. And here, the divine family, the ultimate uh, enactors of spirit itself, declares... Let me just say that Jerusalem is perhaps our greatest apocalypse. It's a full enactment and recover, recovery of an original Christian apocalypse that was wholly lost, our kingdom of God. And here we get a sample of it. Mutual in one another's love and wrath, all renewing. We live as one man for contracting our infinite senses we behold multitude or expanding we behold as one as one man all the universal family and that one man we call Jesus the Christ and he in us, and we in him, live in perfect harmony in Eden, the land of life. Giving, receiving, and forgiving each other's trespasses. He is the good shepherd. He is the Lord and master. 
He is the shepherd of Alvin, or universal humanity. He is all in all. Now, I couldn't think of another passage anywhere that more decisively recalls or renews a Jesus who has been wholly lost. Now, one of the fascinating things about this is, at the very time when uh, our critical scholarship was discovering how Christianity had so profoundly transformed itself in its own genesis, this most fundamentally occurs in the late 19th century. But, uh, for example, one of the things that happened then, and two great scholars named Weiss and Schweitzer, was a realization that uh, the original kingdom of God, or the kingdom of God that Jesus himself enacted, was an apocalyptic kingdom, was an absolute apocalypse. This is what had wholly been lost. And Blake is, I think, the prophet who most fully recovers it, and he recovers it as the self-annihilation of God, because it's only the absolute negation of everything that we have known and named and enacted as God that can make possible a recovery or renewal of God. So it's precisely through the death of God, the death of everything that we have named, known, and enacted as God, it is, in fact, the renewal or resurrection of God. So one of the, one of the paradoxes here is that uh, Blake is, yes, an atheistic prophet. He's perhaps our greatest atheistic prophet. But it's precisely in that atheism that he recovers and renews a lost Jesus and a lost kingdom of God. 